Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be finishing up our full review of the Rapu VT9 Pro. However, I'm going to be doing this a little differently. Um, I was going to do a full, much more in-depth video on this mouse, but the video was like, I'm not kidding you, 40 minutes long. And this mouse, quite frankly, does not deserve the time for me to put 40 minutes into doing a review on this. So I'm going to do a very basic, quick kind of rundown of why this mouse is bad and why you shouldn't buy it, as opposed to me putting an insane amount of effort into making a fully fledged video. We're just going to do the Coppa version of this review today. Just before we get started, as a quick disclaimer, I purchased this unit myself. This was not sent out by Rapu, so this review is not sponsored or affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. Now, let's talk about the things that make this mouse just bad. So first off, this mouse has one of the worst coatings I've ever seen in my life. Um, this is the white version. The black version may have a better coating, but the white version is just unusable. This is the slipperiest coating I have ever seen on a mouse. Now you may have noticed I put grip tape on this one, and this is the included grip tape that came with my VT9 Pro. However, this grip tape is also complete shit. It's probably the worst grip tape I've ever seen. It literally adds maybe 1% more grippability onto a mouse that's already so slippery. You, it's like holding onto an ice cube. It is just a terrible combo overall. The shell shape is a standard symmetrical shape that you'd find in a lot of mice. The problem is though, is that the way this shell peaks where it peaks at the top here of the main clicks, not the shell, this is a very safe shape. So it's very similar to like a GPX or Razer Viper, but you can definitely see some of the inspiration from the GPX and the Viper with how the clicks are installed on this unit. Now, the problem is that the shape isn't really that bad. I don't really necessarily mind the shape per se. The problem is, is that the coating is just unusable, so you can't hold on to the mouse. The only grip style that remotely works with my VT9 Pro is fingertip. And again, I have very big hands. I have 7.5 by 5 inch hands. So I should be able to use a medium one size fits all symmetrical mouse without issue, but it is just so hard to grip. I had to fingertip grip this mouse, which it also had its own problems because the coating is so slippery. Kind of hard to fingertip a mouse that's hard to grip. But on top of that, the mouse's weight coming in at 68 grams did not help at all and made it very hard to use for fingertip grip because it just added a bunch of extra strain. So just universally, the shell is executed in just a, such a poor manner. If it had a better coating, it was lighter, it would be a lot more compatible, but just the default coating is like the worst I have ever seen. And the included grip tape is so bad, it's not even worth including at this point. Now, another factor that makes the VT9 Pro even harder to use is going to be the stock skates. Now to Rappu's credit, the VT9 Pro does come with an extra set of PTFE skates, as well as the regular set of PTFE skates that were included in the box. The skates themselves aren't that bad. The problem with them is, is that they are massive. I'll show you on the camera. I have aftermarkets installed in these now, but look at the surface area that is on these skates. So on the bottom of the most, you have this bottom crescent here. You have one here, one on the other side here, and then you also have this giant surface area skate on the top. Now, the problem with this layout is that there is so much surface area on a heavy mouse, it makes this mouse borderline unusable because it's so heavy. I'll be honest with you, the skates probably add 70 grams onto this mouse and how they perform. And the problem is, is that because there is so much skate area on the area where most of your hand weight is going to rest on this mouse, it causes the bottom of the mouse to drag way more than the top. So when you try to make a glide, the mouse actually drags like this. There's so much drag from the base. Now I obviously did try to put aftermarkets on here and I put the x-ray pad donut skates on here, the Jade versions to try and help offset the weight of this mouse. And that kind of worked, but the problem is, see this tiny little crescent back here? Here. So the problem is, is that this is perfectly sized just enough where I can't put dot skates there. So I have this empty spot on the back of the shell. And what happens is when I'm trying to use this mouse, what will often happen is the mouse will actually tilt backwards because there's no support towards the back of the mouse. So while the stock skates were good, I actually didn't really have a problem with the stock skates themselves. The positioning is a abysmal. This is the kind of position I'd expect to find on like a $2 AliExpress office mouse. It is just one of the worst positioned skates I've ever seen. If the skates were like one eighth of the surface area, they'd be a lot more usable, but with the high weight and this, this insanely high surface area on the VT9 Pro, it just makes this mouse unusable. Now, next up, we have the main clicks. Now, as you probably noticed, the main clicks in this mouse are huge. They're, they're gigantic. They're probably the biggest main clicks you'll see on a mouse this year. And one of the big problems with these ones is that because these are so big, they have a insane amount of weight and so much so weight that Rapu actually had to put tiny little springs on the inside of this mouse to help the springs actually pop back up. The problem with that is that both of the springs broke almost immediately for no reason because I went to take the mouse apart and look on the inside and this, both of the springs were just hanging inside of the shell. So 
I don't understand why that's even on here because they have no rigidity. The actual clicks in the inside are armor on blues. They actually feel good. The problem is that the button itself is just really bad. Now, the other huge problem with the VT9 Pro is that the main clicks, as you can see here, are not indented. And you know what that means, non-indented clicks with big hands is going to be a huge problem. So I'm gonna show you what happens if I actually click this in, because you can see here, if you can see properly, how my thumb hangs over the sides of these clicks because both the clicks have this like overhang on them. I can actually do this with minimal pressure. minimal pressure like it does not take a lot to do this so you can actually just have the clicks just break out of the shell very easily with minimal pressure i don't know why they didn't indent the main clicks i've talked about indented clicks so much last year and so much this year already if these clicks were indented this would not be a problem but this is just insane and this is just unacceptable for a 70 dollar mouse this this should not happen this this is just unacceptable the side buttons feel really bad they're this really weird like kind of triangle design but because they have the same coating as the rest of the shell they're incredibly slippery so if you try and put your thumb on them your thumb just slips off constantly and it makes it just really awkward to use them they just feel terrible the buttons themselves are armor on greens so the button switch itself is actually not bad but the actual buttons themselves just have no grip ability and they're just really hard to use the scroll wheel is nothing to write home about it's really not that fancy now the vt9 pro does also have some extra buttons on it so it does have two dpi buttons on the top of the shell and it does have this little action button on the bottom and the red there now these buttons are pretty bad honestly the dpi buttons feel terrible the bottom button is useless the settings to change the button are useless it is just overall just a bad experience i honestly would rather just see them cut them off just to remove weight because they just don't make any sense now lastly the one other thing i wanted to talk about in conjunction with the weight is the added features now on the bottom of the vt9 pro hopefully you can see it here there is this little magnetic door and you can just kind of push on the bottom and it pops open like this. So this is where you store the 2.4 gigahertz USB-A dongle, and you can actually swap this piece out to be a wireless charger. However, the problem with this is that you have all this extra weight on the inside of the mouse. There is so much wasted space and wasted utilized weight on this mouse. This mouse could easily be, be within like 50 to 55 grams and Rappu actually cared about making a lightweight mouse, but this mouse is 68 grams, which is just way too heavy. So that is all the bad things, well, almost all the bad things that Rappu has done with this mouse. There is one positive and I will say the build quality of the VT9 Pro is fantastic. Very, very good build quality. The internal build quality is very modular, but it is very complicated, which makes this unit very hard to service. Because of that, I'm not even gonna try and do a teardown video on this mouse because it's so hard to take apart and it's so hard to keep track of everything on the inside, it's not even worth me doing. So I'm not gonna make a teardown video. The QC is great, but just the mouse is very complicated and very difficult to take apart on the inside due to how it's manufactured. There's a lot of additional parts in here that are not needed. So there's just so much extra weight. It just makes the teardown process just very difficult. Now, the last thing that is honestly the biggest thing that is going to cause me to say the Rappu VT9 Pro is just a bad mouse and you should not buy it, aside from all the other stuff I've talked about this mouse being not great, is the USB-C port. Now, this USB-C port may look relatively unassuming, as you can see there, it looks pretty normal. It's a pretty normal USB-C cable. There really isn't a lot going on in there. However, there are these very, very, very tiny grooves in the bottom and they're very minimal. And a lot of other reviewers I've seen who talked about this mouse did miss this. Now, the crazy thing about this is, is that Rappu decided to take a universal connector, which is USB-C and see how the Rappu cable fits totally fine. No problems, Rappu works totally fine. But if for whatever reason, you have to use another cable, like another universal USB-C cable. It doesn't fit. It doesn't go in all the way. It makes just enough contact where the mouse will turn on, it will charge, but it won't actually make contact reliably enough for the software to actually take effect. And that's because Rappu decided to put in these little rails on the inside of this mouse. So Rappu has essentially made a universal USB-C connector their own OEM connector, which is infuriating because number one it's a universal connector you should not be changing this shit, no matter what number two have you happened to lose or break the cable that came with your vt9 pro you're out of luck you can't use a usb-c cable that came with any other mouse because every single other mouse has a universal usb-c connector that is the point of the connector it's supposed to be universal and rapid went ahead and it's like nah 
we're going to make it our own by adding these little f***ing grooves into the bottom that make it so you can't use other USB-C connectors. So this mouse, honestly, just because of that, is in the trash can for me. I literally have no interest in even trying this mouse or doing anything else with it because if they're going to f*** around with a USB-C connector, which is supposed to be universal, and making it so you can only use their cables, I have no interest in talking about that product, reviewing that product, recommending that product. I don't care if this is the best mouse in the world. This could be the best mouse hands down if it has a customized usb-c port that prevents it from being used with other cables gone i don't care that should not happen so that right there is why i'm not recommending the vt9 pro at all on top of everything else everything else is just icing on the cake but having a mouse with a custom usb-c port where you can't use other universal cables is just unacceptable to find in the peripheral space there is no reason to do this and for a company like rapu who's been making mice since 2005 who's been making them from almost two decades now I expected a lot more from the VT9 Pro and having a company with so much quote unquote experience working on mice, making a mouse with a customized USB-C port just makes me, I genuinely don't understand the logic behind it. And it is just, it's honestly just crazy. I don't understand the reasoning why they did that. So that is why the Rapu VT9 Pro is earning 2024's first garbage mouse of the year. Do not buy this. This mouse retails for 70 Canadian dollars. I bought this on sale for 35 and I'm still disappointed with this thing. I wouldn't spend $5 in this thing. There is just so many things that have gone wrong with this mouse. It's not even worth saving. There are just better options out there. And for any company who's going to f around with a universal connector should not be a company you're going to be giving your money to. So yeah, that's it. The Rapu VT9 Pro is going to the trash. Anyway, so that is everything for my review of the VT9 Pro. I would apologize for this video being kind of off the rails, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to put my time and hard effort into making a review on this mouse if this mouse is just shit. If it's a shit mouse, I'm gonna tell you guys no matter what, I don't care who the brand is, I'm gonna tell you. And this is the mouse you should not buy. This is just, do not buy this under any circumstances. I'm going to put my efforts towards reviewing actually good mice like the Wise Owl Cloud and the Pulsar X2H, which I'm currently working on. So I'm going to dedicate my time to reviewing those instead of trying to fix the issues on this piece of mouse but anyways that is all for today that's all for the unhinged rant about the vc9 pro and i will catch you guys in the next video peace